Hi, Misha here, and now it's time to look at the A-Wing. We've talked about the Y-Wing, the B-Wing, the X-Wing, most of the Clone War era fighters too. But only today, finally getting to the A-Wing. And that's because of this little model here, this little toy, this little bastard, that took me a little while to find. I'll explain why in a bit. This one is from Hot Wheels, and it's... The A-Wing is seen in Rebels, so it's an early version. This one in the middle is a standard A-Wing from the uh, Return of the Jedi era. This is from the Titanium series, so it's an older one. And then finally here we have the newest one in the line. This is the so-called Resistance A-Wing from The Last Jedi. Now, tentatively speaking, this would be an R-22 spearhead. This would be an RZ-1, and this would be an RZ-2. Although there's definitely some confusion with the R-22 and RZ-1 A-wings. And this has an interesting pedigree. And really, it begins with... This ship, we've looked at it before in a video. This is the Delta 7, specifically this is the wartime version, the Delta 7B. And this is the one that was modified by Anakin, but Jedi often did that. And this was a stripped down, fast, maneuverable, very lightly shielded craft. Originally just had the two pretty small laser guns. Later versions like this have bigger guns on the wings. It um, was only capable of hyperspace through using a ring. It mostly was dedicated for speed and maneuverability and not much else. In fact, one of the updates for the B was that it had an astromech in the center, standard R2 size, before it had to have a cut-down version like an R4. And this was designed by Kuwat. Now, most people know Kuwat for Star Destroyers, but back during the Republic era, they did fighters. They would also go on to do the similar V-Wing. And while the V-Wing would fit in here, it's kind of a bit of an offshoot that really kind of led to the TIE Fighter, which would be uh, Sonar Systems. The direct descendant of the Delta Seven. The Ether Sprite is, in fact, our A-Wing here. Kuwat was working on this shortly after the Clone Wars, seeing the Empire's kind of preference for uh, light, relatively inexpensive fighters that had high speed over defense. They thought the Empire might bite. But they did not. This was around 15 BBY, so a generation nearly before Yavin. They had produced a small batch, and they were sold to a planetary defense force, the Temazuan Imperial Navy, who would use them for defense, escort, and potential interdiction and they were well suited for that. And they were relatively inexpensive. After the inflations of war, they were about 170,000 credits new. About 100,000 used. Now, I'm going to call this an R-22, and I'll explain why later. It had two pretty powerful engines. It had two laser cannon. Very similar to what would be used on something like a TIE Fighter. And it could have two ordnance launchers with a standard load of six concussion missiles each. It also had a respectable sensor package. And could be found in either a two-seat training version or a single-seat 
interceptor version. And it did have a hyperdrive, which is one reason the Empire did not go for it. It was a class one, so pretty fast. But if you'll notice, there's no astromech droid. So it does not have a large jump range. In fact, only two jumps could be stored in its computer. But it's considered a short range. It does have enough consumables for about a week for the pilot, enough oxygen and emergency food rations. But this was meant, yeah, for a more short range. And it had a respectable top speed of about 1,200 kph in an atmosphere. And it was very maneuverable, hence this kind of body. The nickname, Spearhead, kind of comes from, well, the spear look of the craft. Also, A-Wing, because of its mm, creative resemblance to an A. But these were in pretty limited numbers, and several years before Yavin, they started to filter into Resistance Rebellion cells, including Phoenix. They were used in the show Rebels. They were also used in the uh, Resistance, uh, the Insurgents, they're so-called, the uh, movie Rogue Squadron. little die cast model here it's pretty heavy it's not very big but this is not a very big craft but it is mostly metal but no moving parts or anything let's look at the next version and we'll backtrack a bit there's not a lot of data on the uh, r22 because it was kind of created just to fill a gap in canon this is the rz1 a-wing While Kuwat would make the first batch or two of the spearhead, these were kind of put together from parts by the Alliance themselves. Later, Incom would get in, on board and make some. But it was kind of a ad hoc job. I think I'll stand here. There we go. And what they basically did around the time of the Battle of Yavin they took the spearhead's basic frame and they pulled the original engines off and included two new Event Horizon engines for much greater power output, speed, and maneuverability. The top speed would jump up to about 1300 kph and it would be very maneuverable, to say the least. And while the original spear had to have a good sensor package, this would be given a very powerful long-range sensor by tying its various targeting and nav and sensor systems into these new giant powerful engines. It retained the two ordnance launchers, concussion missiles. It has minimal shielding, but it's there. Minimal hull armor, but it is there. Still a two-jump Class One hyperdrive. It is fitted with updated weapons. These can now move about 60 degrees, giving a little more flexibility. But keep in mind, there's only the one pilot, so he's got to do that himself. No R2 to do it for him. With this being a titanium, as you see, the canopy does open, although there's really nothing inside to speak of. I, I don't understand on these why they even did the opening canopies, really. But they did. The guns move. This is also all metal, except for the stabilizing fins. They're angled, but not quite as severely as the earlier model. And this also has drop-down landing gear. If I can, I don't think I've ever done it on this one. I'm bad about that. One. They look pretty good when they're down, but when they're up, if you look on the bottom. But then again, 
the screw holes are a little nicer on the titaniums versus the Hot Wheel. So, there's that. Yeah, we have a little gear. And if you don't want to use those, you have a little stand. So, the RZ1. We did not see it in uh, A New Hope or Empire Strikes Back. We first saw it with Green Squadron in Return of the Jedi. And some canon sources claim that was the first time the A-Wing was available. It was new, kind of like the B-Wing. But, the A-Wing was also seen in the Droids animated series in the 80s, which took place well before that, and has appeared in several other things, including the X-Wing games. So to kind of rectify this, that's where the whole Z-1 A-Wing versus R-22 A-Wing came from. They said, okay, the A-Wings, we know, the RZ-1s, were not available until after Yavin. But the difference, they were basically a spearhead frame with the slightly smaller engines pulled off and larger, more powerful engines put on. Kind of a way to, to get around things, I guess, but it works. Why not? So the spearheads would still be in Rebel service but they were out of production, and the A-Wings were kind of made piecemeal. It said sometimes even wood would be used for certain components like the cockpit. They just they put them together with whatever they had. The main thing was the engines. Uh, these were basically some guns, a powerful sensor package strapped to two very powerful engines with a fusion power generator. And... Uh, they would have some countermeasures, mostly relying on the chaff and flare, but they did have some, some jamming abilities. The idea was for them to zoom in and either do an attack run using their missiles and cannon or a reconnaissance run to gather intel and zoom out before fighters could be scrambled. That was kind of the whole point of making the RZ-1 was to have something faster than the... Uh, TIE LN and something to rival the TIE Interceptor. Again, it's not heavily armored. It can take a couple of laser hits, but nothing crazy. It used speed and maneuverability in its small size. Now, size has been debated a lot on these, but I tend to say I'm of the mindset that these are about 6.9 meters long, and about four and a half meters wide. So pretty small craft. They were pretty unforgiving to fly. They had a pretty sensitive control system. And they required a lot of the pilot's concentration because there was not a second crew or an astromech droid to kind of share the workload. Again though, like the R-22, kind of a short range and usually short duration craft, a strike craft, an interceptor, an interdictor, maybe. And these were again made kind of piecemeal ad hoc under the early rebellion. The first ones served a little bit after the Battle of Yavin. A handful were available during the time of Hoth, but only one full complete squadron of RZ-1s were there at Endor, although some Smaller units and partial squadrons were in attendance, too. And hey, one of these took out a Super Star Destroyer, so they were worth being there. But after Endor, an effort was made to kind of standardize on the A-Wing. The idea was the uh, craft had undergone several years of kind of field repairs, field upgrades, modifications. Some worked, some didn't. Not... All two were alike. <laughs> it was time to kind of standardize. And that's where we get the RZ-2. These were prototyped around 5 ABY. And were starting to go into production shortly after the Battle of Jakku. And by 7 ABY, the RZ-2 was a primary component of the New Republic fleet. In fact, after Disarmament and kind of a scaling back of the military, this was one of their primary fighters because it met the terms of the treaty. Armament-wise, it uses only slightly updated cannon, 
these can now rotate 360 degrees, although they don't on this this uh, one here. I don't move, but they could theoretically point to the rear or below or up. This was tried on the RZ1, but at the time the technology just didn't work. The mounts didn't work. They were unreliable. Well, they got them working with the RZ2. A little more flexibility. Still had the two ordnance launchers that could carry six concussion missiles, but now they can also carry up to three uh, mini proton torpedoes each if needed. On top of that, the sensors were further improved, range and power. And instead of relying on uh, chaff and flare, this relies on more electronic jamming for defense countermeasures. And these are still the Event Horizon engines, but now they have a new core for power generation, more power, which again ties into the sensors, making them more powerful, and helps power the lasers. And it has a slightly higher top speed of about 1,350 kph in an atmosphere. It's a little bit longer than the uh, standard RZ-1 at about 7.7 .7 meters, mostly because of the engines, but it has a more flattened, streamlined fuselage. Because of the new cannon mounts, it's actually slightly wider, but if you just look at the fuselage alone, it's actually slightly narrower. So all in all, it was just an improvement. They made these uh, fins here adjustable. They could be moved a bit for maneuvering in space or for better control in atmosphere. They also made it a little less touchy on the controls, a little easier to handle or recover from a misjudgment. The A-Wing always had a reputation as a difficult bird to master. The uh, Mark II here was still difficult still something pilots took pride in kind of getting a handle on but maybe was just that little bit less killy <laughs> less of an ensign eliminator if you will but the main thing was this was standardized this was a standard design built from inspected common parts and it would return to kuwat manufacturing with only limited assistance from Incom. and these would be produced for about two decades. In fact, by the time of the resistance, around 28 ABY, these were still in production, although very limited numbers really just to replace those lost to attrition. But it was still one of the key fighters of the New Republic, although it was starting to be phased out for newer things like the T-85 X-Wing. And of course, the resistance got their hands on these, and that's why the name Resistance A-Wing. And while the New Republic kind of used them as patrol ships and uh, interceptor ships and whatnot, the Resistance used them more as reconnaissance craft, strike craft, or bomber escort craft. And this, yeah, just generally a more perfected design. And there we have the A-Wing, at least in universe. In our world, the one some call the real world, this is the one we saw on screen and later in droids. He was one of the two new rebel fighters for Last Jedi. And it was definitely a departure. If you look at the X-Wing, the Y-Wing, and even the B-Wing, there's a certain kind of industrial clunkiness to them, especially the Y-Wing and the B-Wing. This is one of the first um, kind of sleek ships. It looks like an interceptor. It looks like a manufactured craft, which is kind of funny considering they were said to be kind of thrown together from whatever they could get their hands on. But oh well. It was small and nimble, but also limited. In this design, where we have a slightly wide body, it was the A-Wing we knew for years. But then the one over here from The Last Jedi was seen in 2017 and this is kind of interesting because it's a bit of a hearkening back to some of the earlier concepts to make the A-Wing look even faster and sleeker. The longer body, the more bulbous elongated engines, 
the slightly shorter fins, and just the overall thin design. But I think it actually works as a version 2, a Mark II in universe. I've said in other videos that of the sequels, I think The Last Jedi maybe has the best ship models. This is very much an A-Wing, but it is different enough that I can buy it being an evolution. And also keep in mind that the A-Wing was one of the newer Rebel craft. You know, the Y-Wing I criticized the uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker for having because the Y-Wing was already old and clunky by A New Hope. So why would it still be around 30 some odd years afterwards? But the A-Wing, it was brand new. Not even in service at Yavin. So, it being around 30 years or so after its introduction, especially with a major update like this, 20 years prior, makes total sense. So, yeah, I don't mind it at all. And then, we have the one from Rebels. This actually was shown in 2016. So, technically predates The Last Jedi, and it kind of gets into the whole R-22 spearhead versus uh, RZ-1 A-wing thing, because some just insist there shouldn't be A-wings before indoor, so that makes some people happy. I don't, it doesn't matter. It's very similar, it doesn't have the, uh, the cutout in the front, which was used for kind of hangar bay stuff with the other two. Yeah, this one has it. And I don't know if it has the ordnance launcher cutouts. Yeah, it does. They're, just, they're a little more on the edge. A little more flattened out. Again, this was done in two seat and one seat. And you can definitely tell the kind of smaller, more compact engines here. Again, it's just a retcon done to make things make sense, so it works. And it was nice to have A-Wings and Rebels. If anything, just not to have X-Wing, X-Wing, X-Wing. Do you hear me? Sequel trilogy. X-Wing's cool, but you can be overdone. And this too does take some inspiration from the early concept. In fact, the paint scheme is kind of an early concept paint scheme seen on the A-Wings. And this one looks very similar to the one we know, but I'll give it a bit of a pass because it's seen in Rebels only a couple of years before Yavin, so yeah, it could just be an early prototype or whatever. I like the uh, very canted engine fins, though. It's kind of neat. And the very squat <laughs> body, very wide. If I were to guess, I would say this is a little bit shorter than the RZ-1, but a little bit wider. Of course, these aren't made to scale. They're just kind of made to a three inch standard. But I wanted to, where's my other one? I, just, I wanted to have all the A-wings, why not? These are cheap enough that you can pick one up for five bucks even now. And they make a few different colors and configurations if you don't like this style. But yeah, the A-Wing is uh, often an unsung hero, but it's a true dedicated interceptor reconnaissance. Whereas, you know, the X-Wing is a multi-role, and the Y-Wing is a light bomber or multi-role, and the B-Wing is a light bomber or assault fighter. This one fills the opposite end of the B-Wing. B-Wing is a little slow, heavy armament, heavy armor. This is fast, able to take on all but the very fastest TIE Fighters like the TIE Defender, but lightly armed and armored, so it's kind of your choice. That's why most people considered A-Wing pilots to be batshit crazy. Makes perfect sense. Also a very cramped cockpit. If it looks roomy, it's not. It's just because the craft is that small. Getting a person in there would, um, yeah, you didn't have a lot of leg room headroom or any room i can't yeah you know, the two-seater would be real fun anyway yeah 
had to do the A-Wing because I've done the rest. So, what do you think? What is your favorite Rebel fighter? Let's talk about them in the comments. And as always, if you could, like, share, and subscribe. This is Misha, and I'll catch you very soon next time.